bet you can't stick it. You're on. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, I think I found the video I wanted to talk about. Unfortunately, I forgot to save it to a playlist, but it had some watch time on it and it cut off probably where I lost my shit and said I need to save this for the channel. I don't know how much of this we're gonna... It's 21 minutes and I can be a little long-winded, so this one might turn into a two-parter or we're gonna skip around. I think I'd rather do a two-parter uh, as long as we're still getting like a good... Why does it say intro all the way over? No, don't, never mind. That must be, forget I said anything. If the flow is good and there's the content's good and we're, we're reacting good. I remember the editing being good in this, you know, maybe there's gonna be a lot to talk about. Um, but if we're, if we're slogging, we're gonna get to the highlights, the things that I can't remember exactly what he said, but I know I, I know I lost it a little bit. Cause he said some dumb shit. All right, so Halo 4 retrospective and review, and the thumbnail said, not as bad as you remember, which I think is a fucking lie, sir, because I know it is as bad as I, it's actually worse than I remember, because I went back and played it and thought about it, so I'll let you take it away. gals, ladies, Hello. and gentlemen. My name is Leigh Balon, and today we're going to be looking back at Halo 4. Okay. The black sheep of the Halo franchise, and quite possibly the... It's, I wouldn't call it the black sheep. When Halo... When 343 or Halo Studios makes three shitty games, they're all black sheep of the franchise, are they not? Oh, who's texting me? No, shut the fuck up. Dude, election next week. I'm just getting constant... Text messages about dumb stuff. I hope they didn't cut the video off. No, we're good. Uh, okay, it's not a black sheep. They all they're all they all they all terrible. They all bad kids. All right, they all bad kids. Hey, come here, buddy. Do you want to see me? Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you met Butters in my last video. He's my big old cat. All right, let's get into this most divisive game in the series. A game that took the franchise in an almost completely different direction, What's narratively, wrong, aesthetically, and gameplay-wise. And Love while you. I'd be hard-pressed to say it succeeded in all aspects, because it obviously didn't, Halo 4 does have way more going for it than I feel a majority of the Halo community gives it credit for. That's Hopefully, so throughout the course of this video, I'll give you all a newfound appreciation for Halo 4, and we'll see I know just he how didn't well do that. That's almost a, a decade after its release. I like the confidence, though. The I like. So I will say this. I know I've been, I'm, I'm kind of shitting on him a little bit right now, but I will say I respect the having an opinion and sticking to it. I, uh, it's more than I can say about other people. So, and the first game in general to be developed by Three Four Three Industries since Bungie's separation from Microsoft, Halo Four was released I'm on November now. 6 of 2012, and had some of the biggest shoes to fill of any video game sequel. Not only would it have to contend with Bungie's oh, last man. entry in the franchise, Reach. Reach, which was only released two years prior and sold like hotcakes, but it'd also have to prove itself as a worthy sequel to what was arguably the most beloved game in the series, Halo 3. Yeah. When looking at Halo 4 as a sequel to those games, it doesn't look... No, I don't want to get into Halo... That Halo 3 will have its day. I want to talk about it. I love that game, but there is a but there. It looked very good, unfortunately. The campaign suffers from a similar issue to the first Halo game, Combat Evolved, where you're frequently running through hordes of enemies to push a button in three different areas to trigger whatever the next thing is. And we in love that mission. about Combat Evolved, sir. I believe you do too, so don't you shit on that. Alright, Combat Evolved is fucking great. Things within the campaign aren't really anything to write home about either. Even at the game's highest of moments, it still can't quite hit the same level as its predecessors. And the content available at launch, while commendable and still better than both Halo 5 oh. and Infinite, there were compromises. But looking at Halo 4 from a different perspective, less of it as a sequel to Halo 3 and more of an epilogue that explores the aftermath of that game, it starts to take on a different per- No, but, see, the problem with that is it is a sequel, so you can't really interpret it as anything else. I believe, if any of my WA viewers are like EFAP connoisseurs, um, there is a person that made a video about Star Wars and said it's only a sequel if you interpret it as a sequel. 
Well, you can't do that if it's in the same timeline. It's a timeline. It's a sequel. So you can't you can't throw these flashy words on it and expect to just mull over the brain and get in. You ain't getting in my head, Mister Larden. All right, it's a sequel. It is a sequel. Okay. There's no argument there. Personality, and I'm a little more agreeable with it. What Halo 4 might lose in terms of campaign replayability and <clears> fun, <throat> it more than makes up for with its incredible story and graphical presentation. <laughs> I'm so tired of people talking about how amazing the story is in this game. Let's let's let him get to his arguments. Let's let him do it. Still do it to this day. Get to it. Up. And to think this game was made for the Xbox 360. The biggest gripe I see leveled at Halo 4, which is also for some people their favorite aspect of the game, is the characterization of Master Chief and Cortana. Bungie notably took a very bare bones and backseat approach when it came to Chief's character. Oh oh oh! This is okay. We're about to get into the first. The thing, the first thing that really, really fucked me. But before we do that, um, is that really, is that the thing that people complain the most about is the characterization of Chief and Cortana? Because, like, I personally don't like Chief's characterization in this game. Like, the way he's, like, a little bit more vulnerable, like I'm chill with, like, he doesn't want Cortana to die. Like, I get that. Like, they're... The fact that he's like kind of having a little bit of denial on like her current like physical state, like I'm I'm fine with that. But the biggest thing is like retconning his origin and humanity's origin and having the forerunners become these. Like when the librarian shows up and talks about how he's not just a super soldier who's really competent, he's actually the super special, fucking amazing. God, they took a really cool space sci-fi and they threw fantasy in it and made it worse. They just made it categorically a worse story. That's what I hate the most out of it. He's a chosen one now. He's not just a guy that's good at his job. He was cooler when he was a guy. Okay, let's get into the thing. I think this is this is point number one that made me lose my marbles a little bit. Uh, Bungie notably took a very bare bones and backseat approach when it came to Chief's character. And as Joe Staten famously said in this Halo 3 vidoc, one of the keys to the success of the story is we didn't pump a lot of time in figuring out who the Master Chief was and why he was a ghost in a shell. We thought he is a husk. He's a big green suit of armor that you move around. And that might have worked for a while. But might have worked for a while. First thing, first red flag I got in there. It might have worked for a while. No, motherfucker, it was working fine. Uh, it's funny because they changed from that approach and then Halo fucking sunk. Whoop. So yeah, it's done. It's done. It used to sell consoles. Now they're lucky if they can sell a few whatever the fucking number is for copies that they want to get them. Like, it, it, it is such a silly and like, um, like non-self-aware thing to say, like this version of Master Chief, it worked for a while, but it needed to change. Like, well, you see, you changed it and simultaneously the game became shit. So maybe, just maybe, the formula was working. And uh, to, to get into what they're going to say later, like, I'm, yeah, it's cool to explore a little bit more of what's going on with Master Chief. But you should probably do it the way they did it in God of War and not whatever the fuck this is. Where they're, like, beating you over the head with the fact that he's not just a man in a mask. There's a dude under there. I fucking know there's a dude under there, bud. He's the same fucking guy. He, like, I said this when I was talking about... <sighs> Sorry, I'll drop the accent. I said this when I was talking about... Um, the Halo TV show, exploring the man behind the mask. It's like, whoa, I'm somebody else now. Who are you? Yeah, it's fucking retarded. Yeah, there is a man under the mask. He doesn't put on the helmet and become a different person like he literally did in Halo, the TV show season two. Like, there is a way to do this. And it takes a very, it takes a talented writer, if you want to explore a little bit more. Uh, they need to be competent. They need to know what they're doing. But... This ain't it. Everything that this, none of this is like, hey, the thing I love about what I said last week is like, it's, it's become kind of, it's chill to like shit on 343 now. Like it's like, that's the thing we're allowed to do. And, um, there's nowhere to hide anymore. Like 343 has been rebranded. Uh, it's probably still the same company, but they were like, yeah, we haven't put out a good game at all. The whole time that we've had Halo and we've had Halo longer than Bungie. This isn't good guys. 
Uh, there's nowhere to hide. Halo sucks now. It is. That's, that's just what it is. So you can say all you want, like, oh, they needed to do explore XYZ with Master Chief, but they did it badly. I'm not saying don't do it, but do it good. They did it badly. Halo 4's campaign is shit. We're going to get more into why, hopefully. Um... Justification for this sudden change in character is that Halo 4 is really a fish out of water story. Chief is arguably being challenged more in this game than he ever has been before. Killing Hordes of Covenant? Not a problem. He's been doing that for the last 20 plus years. The hero of humanity in The Last Spartan? Well, not anymore, as suddenly there's hundreds of Spartans and he isn't really that special anymore. But... But he is though. The writers just wanted you to think that. They just did so poorly. These Spartans? They can't hold a finger to the Master Chief. That guy would fuck all of them up, barely break a sweat. They're probably like equivalent to fighting a bunch of elites to him. And if you've played the games, you know that you fucking mow down elites like nobody's business. Um, I don't think that that's what's going through his head when uh, Halo 4 is happening. Oh, I'm not the only Spartan anymore. I used to be the special one, but now they got other people to replace me. Like, do you think that that's going on in that noggin of his? No. Why would it? The dude's got way more important things to be worrying about right now. He's not going, oh man. <sighs> These points, man. These points. The shining example of the best a soldier can be, not really, as he disobeys orders for the first time in the series, is... F yeah, because this dude is a batshit fucking lunatic. Okay, if you're... If you haven't watched my Halo review, go to my Del Rio section. Um, I don't have timestamps in that video. Uh... It's in there. It's in there. Sorry. Um, that guy is the most cartoonishly evil, retarded character that Halo has ever put in a game. He's nuts. And he's incredibly antagonistic towards the survivor, Master Chief. He found Master Chief alive. The savior, like, with help. Like, I'm not saying he did it by himself, but, like, the mo one of the most quintessential people in the survival of the human species is here. He's alive. You found him. Four or five years after he went missing. You think that he'd be excited. Just imagine the, uh, the, the um, recognition he could get for saving Master Chief from being lost in space. But he is a dick from the second he finds out Master Chief is there. And he sends his people on a recon mission to get them fucking killed and lose their pelicans while their ship is under attack. And then when Master Chief says, hey, sir, what about the reconnaissance? And he's like, this is a blow through up. Oh, so you're cool with sending out reconnaissance while the ship is under attack by a giant floating testicle that seems indestructible, but you're not cool with sending out reconnaissance when we need to know the lay of the land to go blow up this thing that's stopping us from going home. Like, he's dumb. He is very, very stupid. So yeah, of course Master Chief didn't listen to him. I wouldn't fucking listen to him. Listen, I hate it when people who haven't been in the military talk about military structure. Like... Ooh, one of the biggest ones is Holdo. My God, I don't want to go on too big of a tangent here. But people were literally like, Poe staged a mutiny. That's bad. And they're like, yeah, because the writers want you to think it's bad. But if your commanding officer is about to get you and everybody else on the ship fucking blown up, then a mutiny is the best fucking choice of action. He was operating on the information that he had. Poe was in the right. Poe did nothing wrong. Chief did nothing wrong here when he got in homie's face and told him, no, sir. Did he punch him? No. He handled it extremely professionally, but he was also like, you're not taking this chip. There's nothing wrong with what Chief did here. This guy, this guy is cartoonishly stupid. All right. Fucking Del Retardo over here. But Lapper, Lard, whatever, how do you ever the fuck you say your name just eats this shit up frequently talked down to and after years of conflict is considered to be nothing more than an old antiquated piece of military tech. Halo 4 does the smart thing of switching oh, the stakes that. away from the galaxy ending levels of Halo 3 as there's no way you'd be able to top that and instead chooses to focus on personal stakes and pushes Chief to his limits mentally rather than... Yeah, but they didn't though. But they didn't. Like, they, they created galaxy-ending stakes with the Didact. If he got his hands on the Composer, then, like, we're fucked. So they... Listen to this. Listen to what he just said. He's lying to you. ...is frequently talked down to and after years of conflict is considered to be nothing more than an old, antiquated piece of military tech. Halo okay, Ford the, that... Sorry, we're going back to point. There's just... He's firing out point after point here. Like... This is the reason why videos can get really, really long is because you say a thing and then you can talk about that thing for a long time. 
So, sorry, we have to go two points back here. So we're going to do that one more time. ...for the first time in the series, is frequently talked down to, and after years of conflict, is considered to be nothing more than an old, antiquated piece of military tech. See, and that in and of itself is very stupid. That, but that's a 343 thing. They didn't have to do that. To do that. that is the direction that they chose to go. They had that stupid uh, prologue where they're talking about how Halsey's like, don't underestimate him. They want to make more Spartans. They're making it very clear that the... Uh, the cogs of the military, they don't value the Spartans' lives and stuff. Like, dude, those guys are expensive as fuck, and they take a very long time to build, especially the Spartan twos. Like, Master Chief, with his success rate, and the fact that he's the strongest uh, of the remaining Spartans, because he could fucking whip any of the Spartan fives or whatever these are, asses. Like, they value him. And I put examples of Lord Hood talking to Chief, like... He respects him, and that's how a military leader would look at Chief. Like, yeah, I am technically your boss, and I'm telling you what to do and where to go because I'm, like, a brain. But you are muscle, and I value you a lot, is how he would be treating him. He's not just going to be like, oh, you're a fucking tank. I could send you to die. It's the fucking Master Chief. He's, man, he's done so much for humanity. Like, um, when he's like, sir, can I uh, leave the station? And then Hood's, like, dealing with stuff, but he goes, why? And then uh, he's, like, to give the Covenant back their bomb, you know? One of the coolest cutscenes ever. And then Lord Hood stops, he looks up, and then he's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Because he trusts him to get the job done. And, like, that, that that's a 343 thing. They, cre they arbitrarily created this uh, dynamic where Master Chief is this piece of technology that they don't actually give a shit about. It's, it's stupid. So... Uh -uh, on this point. Now let's get into the next one that I just had to rewind for. Before does the smart thing of switching the stakes away from the galaxy ending levels of Halo 3 as there's no way you'd be able to top that and instead chooses to focus on personal stakes and push... See, but he's lying to you. That's a lie because the didact and the composer are galaxy ending stakes. Maybe not like as instant as the ring, but with his indestructible nature and his OP like the... Like, he could go around and just keep doing whatever he's doing. What was the plot again? He wanted to, like, turn everybody into, uh, like, artificial intelligence slaves. I don't know exactly. It was all nonsense bullshit. But, world-ending stakes. Like, they did that. Like, this thing with her and Master Chief, like, yeah, it is, it is a big part of the story. And it has some, it has some imp things that happen in it that kind of change the direction of the story. But this is not what it's focused on. We're still running around killing the fuck out of Prometheans and aliens. And um, and we have world-ending stakes. So this is just a lie. This is just wrong. I, I don't want to say... Listen. I don't know anything about this guy. I don't want to use the word lie loosely because that implies that there's motive. Uh, we'll just say he's wrong until I get more information to do that. He's very wrong here. Just chief to his limits mentally rather than just physically. Halo 4 has that stark change in characterization for Chief exactly because of that. He's not in his element anymore. It's as jarring to us as- Oh, dude, the Force. Like, well, how can you throw this on screen and be like, okay with this? Fucking Emperor Palpatine over here. Vampire Palpatine. Force pulling the mask. Like, God, what an awful decision. What an awful decision. Audience, as it likely is to him, as he struggles to <clears> adapt <throat> to this new, more personal situation, all the while dealing and grappling with emotions that he's probably never felt before. Okay, he's felt, dude, God, he's felt emotions before. And I put this in my Halo 2 video too. There is a scene, okay, we get most, more of this in like Halo 2's and Halos 2 and 3. Uh, but, you know, we have the scene where Cortana's like, I have to stay here because I don't want to risk a remote detonation. Like, yeah, I, I can quote the fuck out of that game because I played it so many times growing up. But, um, there's a scene, like, he's staring at her and you see her reflection in his vi it's a very intentional shot. You know, she's there, you can see her figure, and there's a, there's a flood dropship coming in and he doesn't break his, he, did, he, he hangs on her gaze for a moment because he doesn't want to leave her there. Like, you think he's not feeling anything. You think the first time he ever felt something was in Halo 4 and he was actually a robot during Bungie's tenure? Because it's not true. Like, Joseph Staten can say, yeah, we didn't focus much on his personality. It doesn't mean he doesn't have personality traits. Like, it was intentional. He did have a personality in Halo 2 and 1, 2, and 3. But in Halo 3, you get more of that. Uh, when he sees Miranda Keys is dead, like, he's literally, like, standing there, like, slumped, like, military, you know, shoulders back. You're walking around, very headstrong, you know? 
Like that's how he is like 99% of the time, probably higher than that. But he sees Miranda Key's dead and Sergeant Johnson holding her. He cares about both of them very much. His arms are slumped forward and he's just staring. He is just like, fuck, I didn't get here fast enough. She's dead. Like you think he wasn't feeling anything there, my man. My dude, Larden. And then, like, and I was saving this one for last, Johnson, who's been with him since the first game, he dies. And Chief is not handling that okay. Because, like I said in my video, the second Spark shoots him, Chief is fucking running towards Spark. He doesn't have a gun. He's just, I need to get over there. Acting totally, like, he's, he's thinking, he's not thinking with this, he's thinking with this. He's like, I gotta get over there. Um... Then he gets blasted by Spark, and you kill Spark, but then he gets down on his knees, like, I'm getting you out of here, no you're not. Uh, and then he ends up dying, send me out with a bang, and then it, they, it's all about the camera angles, man. He can't see his face, but they just kind of, they hang on his hand, and he lets Cortana, like, come out of the little thing, and you see his hand, and she looks at him, and she's like, Chief, I'm so sorry, and then you just kind of see his hand move. Because they're like, they don't even need to show you his helmet. I say they don't even need to show your face, they don't even need to show you his helmet. It's like, yeah, this motherfucker's not in a good mental state right now, okay? Like, yeah, he won, he succeeded. Him and Arbiter and Cortana got off world, but he lost Keys and he lost Johnson. So pretending like he didn't have a personality in Halo's 2 and 3, that pisses me off more than anything. The motherfucker had a personality and all of these Halo 4 fans wanna act like he didn't. I'm like, dude, you, you don't even know how to talk about this stuff. You're just either making shit up or you just don't know, you just don't, you just don't get it. What makes Halo 4 even harder to sit through is when you stop and think about Chief's story. This isn't something that's shut down your throat as a player, but when you think about it for a little bit, it becomes all the more depressing. John was stolen from his family at the age of six and- Yeah, I know this. Listen. The whole fact, like Halsey taking them, and it ended up being for the greater good. Like there's something neat about having the Spartans like understanding knowing what happened to them and like accepting it for the greater good of humanity because if not for them we wouldn't have made it or like humans would have died in the Halo universe so like it's like an ends kind of justified the means even though they weren't even made for those means you know like there's there's a lot of really interesting conversations to be had there but to just appeal to the emotional aspect of like every single time it's like it's all they're capable of these these people I don't know about you, but when I was six years old, the only thing I knew was that there were some kids I liked, some that I didn't. Lunch was my favorite time of day, and Star Wars action figures, poor oh boy. Yep, what do you think the best time is to indoctrinate somebody? Well, they literally say that in the book. It's when you're a child. They made them very... Yeah, it's fucked up what happened to them. But they're adults now, and they, like, accept it as... as a, as a, a means... as a necessary means to survival. There's an interesting conversation to be had there. He's like, yeah, I know what happened to me, but if it didn't, like, we would have died anyways. Like, it's just kind of cool and also terrible. But just to just talk about it like this, it's just, it just seems so juvenile. They were life. My social abilities have hardly developed and without being able to learn and grow with others my age in an open environment they grow with others that his something age. like school provides, I'd probably still be as emotionally stunted as a six-year-old. But he did grow up with other people. He had a whole bunch of people. Like, where do you think his number comes from? Probably the numbers of people that they had in the uh, program. Hmm? He grew up with these people and they became his brothers brothers and sisters in arms. Man, how, do, how else do you develop like a fucking tight wolf pack? You know what I mean? Like warriors from childbirth and then hormonally augmented to be these just absolute units having each other's backs being able to communicate without talking to each other you know what i mean because they've just like the training constant there's they're so efficient because of what they did and i'm not justifying i'm saying yeah it's fucked up but I, this appeal to emotion just it always it's always so exhausting because it's just like dude you're barely scratching the surface on what can be said here at, at that age and placed into a military training academy with others and was essentially told that the life he once had was gone that the very fate of humanity itself was squarely on his shoulders through years of training alongside these other children he grew to know them love them care for them like a new family as any memories he might have had of his life before being abducted slowly drifted away 
The only person he had close to a mother figure is the woman who found him all those years ago, Dr. Catherine Halsey. She sees John as Man, a natural born leader, graphics. and so he's tasked with leading the others. That also puts their lives in his hands. Mission after mission, John starts to lose the friends he's made, the others like him, arguably the closest thing he now has to a new family. Eventually, it's just a small... I feel like I'm just... I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm not reacting enough to this. It's just he's recapping things. There's not really anything for me to say here. But I don't want to skip too far, because... He once had for the other Spartans and Dr. Halsey. The relationship with her is one that is infinitely more complicated than just friendship. Imagine okay. going through hell and back with this person, someone who was always there by your side, helping you through thick and thin, then you're hit with the news that this person is dying. The last person you can call a friend, someone who understands you like no other. Yeah, of course. He's, he's allowed to feel emotional about this. It's just the way that they executed it. He's like building up. He's got the p violin playing in the background. He's trying to like sell the emotional... Like, yeah, he's allowed to be sad about it. Nobody's complaining that he was sad about Cortana dying. Like, yeah, that makes fucking sense. Why do you think he was so motivated to go get her? He was, he cares about her. He's like, you know what? No, I know where she's at. I need to go save her from the grave mine. So he volunteers to go. He's like, yeah, I'll find her solution. I'll bring him back. He saved her. He cares about her. Like, this appeal to emotion is driving him crazy. You do anything in order to try crazy. to help them. And that's exactly what John tries to do. And slowly starts unraveling before our very eyes. Like the emotionally stunted child the chief is, still that six-year-old boy underneath the thick titanium composite plates of armor, chief tries his hardest to ignore this. Focus. See, no, I don't like that because he's not mentally a six-year-old. Like, he's been through a lot. He was the leader of his squad of Spartans. He, I just feel like this is bullshit, you know? Oh man, I feel like I'm running out of energy here. This this emotional bit's like fucking wiping me out. I don't even know what time it is, but I feel like I need to go to bed soon. All right, I had to take a break for a second. This appeal to emotion is driving me crazy. I feel like he's just... The rest of this might be a bust. I feel like those points I made earlier were like the big ones. I'm definitely not talking about the multiplayer, because like I said, I wasn't, or I've said in previous videos, I wasn't there for it. Um, I was like in the military and stuff, so like we didn't, I didn't, I wasn't in real time playing like Halo and stuff. Um, and by the time I got to it, I didn't have Wi-Fi, so it was simply just play the campaign and be done with it. So we're going to skip this section, so we might be able to finish this, because I might skip the rest of this. This... This campaign thing is really droning on. He's talking about the multi... He's just talking about... Cortana and Chief, and he's kind of making stuff up about how he's still mentally a six-year-old, and it's just like, eh. Dude, you're really, really holding on to that bit there. Like, you haven't spoken about the Didact, you haven't spoken about Del Rio. Man, if he talks about Del Rio, I got some shit to say about those two, so let's hope he moves on from this. Think only on the mission ahead, he doesn't see failure as an option. Years of indoctrination has led him to believe that he will win. Okay, yeah, but he has lost people multiple like a lot at this point he knows what it's like to lose people he cares about so this appeal to like oh my god cortana's dying and he's in denial and he's mentally sick because of his indoctrination like it's all bullshit none of this he's he's making all this up it's not connected similarly to how he always won those games of king of the hill on his childhood playground whenever faced i know something about topic, the lord like this moment in the campaign for all that I'll never actually know if it looks real, if it feels real. Chief fiddles with his gun like a child with their favorite toy. When Cortana tells him that she's not coming with him this time, he doesn't want to hear it. He fights till the Dude, very... He's getting ready to go do the mission. Like, you know, you can talk to somebody and rack your rifle. Like, they, I'm just saying, like, there is a... You can do this. Okay, it was the execution. This game, this campaign is just shit. Like, you can take this story and make it work. Like, this exact same story. You just, you need somebody more competent behind the, the writing of it. Um, I, just, I really hope he talks about the didact. And I'm running out of patience for this Cortana stuff. The last moment to try and get Cortana to stay with him appeals right to the very end. But this time... 
it's not enough. Yes, he's failed before. This time, okay. the legendary Master Chief doesn't finish the fight, and regardless of how hard he tried, he still loses. He's lost people What's before, man. To him, man. Having spent years trying to protect those around you, only to fail time after time, with each victory against the Covenant or another opposing force, there's always a heavy price paid. Once John loses Cortana, his connection to that family he once had is now gone, and suddenly he's in uncharted territory. The last bit of advice she gave him was to figure out which one of them was the machine. See, I hate, I hate that, because this whole, you need to find out which one of us is the machine thing, it was... It's all been seeds planted since 343 took over, disrespected the original creators, and made this dog shit game is what led us to the Halo TV show. That is one of the most insulting adaptations, I've, probably the most insulting adaptation I've ever seen in my life. He's not a robot. He never was. I already went on a diatribe about how he had a personality in the other games. This is all bullshit. I hate... See... Every fucking 343 Defender, this is the type of shit that they say. And it's all unfounded. It's all nonsense. This, And it's always the same fucking argument. Like, dude. Halo 4 answers that question. It's John. John realizes yeah. this and he's like, Oh my god, he is a dude with a helmet on. Questioning who he is. Without this family, what does he have left? Nothing except the distant memories of who he once was before he became the Master Chief, if those memories are even still accurate. What was his purpose now? What was he going to do? Just keep going on like nothing happened? Like he used to? But how could he after all this loss? Where did he come from? John isn't a name. What was his name? Who am I? And that is the core question so of the whole story. Who is the Master Chief? John 117. Yeah, dude, he, he probably liked me. The way he's talking, this was made two years ago. He probably likes the fucking Halo TV show. Like, he is blowing this whole concept. Like, just getting right up in there. Like, it's all bullshit. I already talked a lot about it. I'm not gonna keep doing this. It's just... Fucking hell. I was really hoping that this video would be spicier. He's not... I wanted him to defend Del Rio. Man, that would be incredible. I, I really want somebody to defend Del Rio. If you know anybody who's defended Del Rio in a video... Fucking recommend it to me, please. I would love to talk about that guy. ...is that he never finds out. Because the Reclaimer trilogy was effectively scrapped, and Halo 5 was... well... Yeah, Halo because 5, Halo 4 sucks. John is never able to find out who he is. Blue Team are hastily pushed into the game, and any chance... Yeah, this game sucked to too. Grow ...and develop on his own... ...until you're really lost. sad about Halo it. Halo 4's story sets up the perfect arc for Master Chief going forward, while also... Are you into it? ...ending. The player is left in a similarly difficult position as Master Chief of wondering, what now? For mm. some people, I'm sure Halo 4 was their last Halo game as it gives off the same kind of vibes to me as a movie like Logan, where Halo unfortunately, the characters don't live happily ever after. You just- the only thing Dude. I hate it when people, like, they'll take, like, the concept, but it's a really, really shitty version of that concept and compare it to something, like, this is a good movie, Logan. And Halo 4 is just fucking awful. So to like compare them to each other is like really, really laughable. What you get is a feeling of emptiness. It's the first Halo game to not end on some kind of cliffhanger. This My goodness! We're just getting started. No finishing this fight. And no shot of the forward unto door God, that line was fucking awesome. On a shield world. I just remember playing enough, Halo 2 over and over again. Over again. Because, I, well, let me just remind you, I was, Halo 2 came out, Xbox Live wasn't a thing yet. Uh, so I played that campaign. Like, over, and over, and over again. And every single time he said finishing his fight, just goosebumps, the little kid me is like, man, I'm ready for Halo 3 to come out. But then Halo, like, their uh, Xbox Live became a thing, and my goodness. I missed the internet back then, man. You could say whatever the hell you wanted. Freedom of speech was alive and well on the internet. My goodness. Man. Yeah. A lot of people today wouldn't survive in the fucking Halo 2 Lobbies. Holy cow. Almost like this really is signaling the end of Master Chief's time as a Spartan. Alternatively, you could view it as Chief shedding this robotic skin after years of being nothing more than a machine. And then Halo 5 was like a Sims game. game. You play as Master Chief starting a family in a house. On further. Halo 4 is well known for having the most controversial Okay, I am skipping multiplayer. I've already said why. We might actually be able to get through this. Today... Forge, I don't really want to talk about Forge because it's another thing I didn't play with much. Sorry. Spartan Ops, fuck, we might be done. Hold on.
Halo 4 is infinite. That might be, might have some interesting shit in there. The closing, dude, he has to say something about Del Rio. He has to. Spartan Ops, I don't really want to talk about those either. I didn't really dick around with them much. Let's do... Against Jewel and Dharma. Gets killed off unceremoniously in literally the second ever cut. Oh yeah, this is just 343 three, just relying on their books more than anything else. Like, yeah, God, they're, they're so incompetent. He should have been the main antagonist of 4 and 5. This Madama guy. God, my shoulder hurts. Halo 5. Wow. Despite the community's best okay. attempts to try and bury this game in a sea of negativity, Halo 4's impacts are still being felt to this day. It's, it's not a sea of negativity. It's just a sea of being honest. The game sucks, mate. I'm not Australian. It's a fun word to say sometimes. Without its stark changes to the art style and the community response to it, we might never have gotten Infinite's amazing mix of classic and new. Halo 4 was also the first game to bring deeper elements of the lore, like the mantle of responsibility, to yeah. the forefront of the story. Yeah. Well, you just so casually say that, like, that's a good thing. Like, the mantle of a... I still don't know what that is, and nor do I fucking care to find out. It's dumb. It's dumb. Like, it literally is 343 got the toys and then started just beating the shit out of them in the sandbox. And then the, the other kids were just looking at their toys, just helpless, like, oh, what are you doing to my toys? Like, it's exactly what it is. Like, I don't care about any of this. Like, there, this guy is a joke. He should have never been in this sh bullshit series. Jeff, Jesus, man. This is weird seeing people defend this game. Which appears to be at least partly referenced by the Harbinger, the new enemy of Infinite's camp. Yeah, I don't even know what the Harbinger is, but like, talk about a fucking goofy ass name, Harbinger. Like, oh, not on the nose at all. Anyways, like, the hell was that even about? I really, I barely remember shit about Infinite. It was such a nothing burger of a game. The pain. And most importantly, and all this magic. The chief is still feeling the repercussions of Cortana's loss. With everything she said, unfortunately, coming to fruition. They'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. But with it, Chief also carried the most important lesson of them all. They said that, like, soldiers and humanity are two different things. Oh, I hate this line. Soldiers aren't machines. <sighs> We're just people. God, I hate this line. I'm sorry. I was bitching about it before I let him say it. But with it, Chief also carried the most important lesson of them all. They said that, like, soldiers and humanity are two different things. Soldiers aren't machines. We're just people. His interactions. This is the problem with like non vets, like people who don't aren't in the military, like heading a <clears throat> military side fight. It obviously can be done because they did it the first like you know ten years, what however many years of Halo's existence. But like, dude, I beg you, like devs stuff, just go talk. They're vets everywhere everywhere shit i'll bullshit with you and tell you some stuff like we know we're not robots like this is ridiculous we're not machines we're people too yeah yeah like marines they like to fucking they like to fuck they like to drink they like to go do stupid shit badass man it's almost as badass as my mustache like a mustache with titties drinking problem Hell, I ain't got no damn drinking problem. I just like to party. Everybody's too uptight around here. Last week, we all go out to Taco Tuesdays have some cervezas and margaritas. I get a little tuned up on tequila shots. Then I go out the parking lot to take me a piss. And soldiers aren't machines. We're just people. Do robots do either of those things? Okay, uh, no. Like to work out. Like to get sick gains. Like to... Go out to dinner and just smash. Dude, we went to like a fucking all-you-can-eat sushi place. And um, man, the bill we had for like six of us was insane. Like we can throw down food like nobody's business. But robots don't do that. Like that line just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't belong in a military sci-fi. It's, it's so stupid. And it's such an appeal to the man behind the mask. Because they're just beating you over the head with it constantly. Like, yeah. I hate, I hate that line. So much. Like, I beg these people, just go talk to a military vet. 
get one on your staff and make shit happen that makes sense. This guy clearly doesn't know. He's eating this slop up. Even other people are, for lack of a better word, more human than previous games. Chief seems more inclined to offer a word of reassurance to those around him than to just quietly drop in, kill all the banished, and refuse to elaborate any further. As much of a chat move as that is, it's an even bigger chat move to realize that these people serving alongside you are more than just the same. Oh, I'm losing my mind here. He always knew that, man. Like, I even made a point in my video to be like, I'm doing a catch-all for all of the Marines that were in the fucking Goss Cannon or the 50 Cal and your Warthog. Like, those motherfuckers were always with you. They were always your hype men. They'd be, like, fucking cheering when you jumped the Warthog. And then they were always like, oh, look, a Mach 5. Or, uh, I don't know, he's like, oh, is that a Spartan? We're gonna be all right. You know what I mean? Like, they were, dude, there was, like, camaraderie and there was, like, a fucking central thing going on there in the other game. Just, I urge you, LARPer, Laper, whatever your fucking name is, go play Halo's one, two, and three again, because you're totally misrepresenting them, like hard fucking core, and just to prop up this bullshit Halo 4. Go play him again. Like, man, you... Like, do we have to talk about mission number one? You're about to hop into the escape pod. Dude falls on the ground, he's like, oh! Master Chief fucking tosses him in. Like, he didn't just leave him there. Like, yeah, he knows these people's lives matter. He, he cares about them. This is weird. This is weird. It's just like people just don't... I wonder how old this guy is. More than just the teams. <laughs> Fucking hell. I, I do that all the time, a stroke man. or something. Yeah. More than just machines. That's and funny. Th they're not as cool, calm, and collected as a seven-foot super soldier who's been doing this for several decades. You know, people yeah. always ask... But every yes, time you showed up, they were just so happy. Oh, man. He just threw a grenade at his own guys. You see that? They're about to blow up. Not always how they're doing. And I feel like post Halo 4 Chief would be more oh, inclined no. to, you know, really, really sit down and have a beer with his fellow, fellow. Dude, but that's the thing. Like, he probably did a little. I don't get this, man. It's just totally misrepresenting. Totally misrepresentation of the games. And marine comrades and you know, really get to know them. While the story for campaign is personal and tugs at the heartstrings, it's also undoubtedly and, oh, sorry, Okay, hold on. To be totally quite honest, fuck, this just another tangent here. Let's look at what he just said again. He's like... Several decades. You know, people always ask, what are the Marines doing? Not always how they're doing. Okay, but the thing is, it's, it's not like Halo 4 explored this. It, they didn't. Like, I even made a point to talk in my Halo 4 review there's only one mission that seems very, like, military-centric, and it's the Mammoth one. It's the only one I like. And it's not even the full mission, because guess what happens when the Mammoth gets to some debris it can't get over? Master Chief says, I can go faster by myself. Okay, dude. Fucking have at it. Go on without a squad. Fuck us, I guess. Like, if anything, these guys were like, yeah, Master Chief needs our help. Let's fucking go. I'm gonna... I'm willing to die for this motherfucker. I hope I don't, but let's fucking kill some shit. Save the planet. You know... Because we're going to die anyways. Like, we got to save humanity. Like, it's a very noble cause. But then you get to Halo 4 and you're just like, the Marines are irrelevant. Like, they don't fucking matter. So, so to talk about this, like, oh yeah, we're exploring Master Chief's reality and he should go have a beer with uh, the Marines and the ODSTs and get to know them. You, don't, you get to know them way, way less in this game. They're fucking irrelevant here. So, uh -uh. bad point. Really bad point like post Halo 4 Chief would be more inclined to, you know, really, really sit down and have a beer with his fellow, fellow Marine comrades and you know, really get to know them. While the story for campaign is personal and tugs at the heartstrings, and it's sucks. also yeah. undoubtedly a jarring transition from Halo 3 to this, and not to everyone's liking. Yeah, it's terrible. While the multiplayer feels responsive and smooth, the introduction of custom loadouts... I do kind of like, uh, like how I reacted to Min Blitz talking about how, like, stupid the multiplayer was in this game, because he's, like, way more mechanics focused. And for me, this is the same night, so it's just kind of funny. But for you, this will be like, you know, I'll post this video later. Um, but I just got, I went to Mint Blitz, and he was talking about how shit Halo 4's multiplayer was. And then this guy's like, it's really smooth, and I like it. And like, yeah, it's just kind of a funny, like, um, just keep going. We're almost there. Armor abilities, 
is obviously a very lousy appeal to Call of Duty fans and a direct yeah. spit. Hey, everybody in the face knows of that. He's, he's just scraping the surface on all this shit. Halo 4 is by no means a perfect I think he game. really knows what he's I talking go about. I so far as to say, objectively, it's not even a great Halo game like games before it were. But I'll tell you what it was for me. It was my Halo game. It, there it is. There it is. It was my Halo game. Well, listen, dude. Sorry about you. Don't get mad at me. Like I said in one of my other videos, it's your fucking parents' fault. It's not mine. Your opinion on this sucks, okay? You can you can say you like this game all you want. That's cool. It's terrible, though. It's terrible. And you can't really call it good because it ain't. It's uh, like that whole, you know, objective, subjective thing. Like, if you're not on that bandwagon for a conversation, like, this shit's been years. Like, Star Wars kind of, like, paved the way for it because they're like, listen, The Last Jedi is a shit movie. You can like it, but it's shit. People are like, that doesn't make sense. It's a movie. It's like, well, it's a craft. It's a piece of art. It can be judged. It can be taught. If you're talking, like, just basic cause and effect. And there ain't no cause and effect in this game. And they don't even tell you where the fuck you're at because you got to read books to understand this game. It's bad. It's a bad game. Okay, but it was my Halo game. I don't really care. I, I don't, okay? I'm sorry your game was shit. It's like that short that I covered where, uh, you know, we grew up, what did that guy say? Uh, we grew up eating ice cream and now we're ungrateful. It's like, no, his analogy was fucking wrong. We grew up eating steak and potatoes and you grew up eating like fucking one star Taco Bell because that's what this game is, especially for a triple A. Holy shit. The money involved in this. And this is the story we got. The disrespect. The disrespect around here is criminal. This is ridiculous. All right, yeah. Whoa, he, he fucking fired me up with that. This was my Halo game. Yeah. Sorry about you, dude. It ain't my fault. Blame your parents for having you too late. Dived into this series with Halo. I'll let him say that again for you. God, is... Lousy appeal to Call of Duty fans and a direct spit in the face to people who didn't enjoy Reach's multiplayer. Halo 4 is by no means a perfect game. I'd go so far as to say objectively, it... I hate it when people say it. it's not a perfect. Nothing's perfect. Like, even Lord of the Rings ain't perfect. I mean, it might as well be, but it's not. You know, it's such a, it's such a pointless thing to say, oh, it's not perfect. You're like, oh, how was Morbius? Uh, it's not perfect. Like, how was um, Snake Eyes? It's not perfect. Like, I like bad movies. Okay, I love them. Like, I'll sit through and watch and I'll have a blast. Snake Eyes, I turned that shit off. Because it was so bad, I wasn't even having fun. But if somebody was, if I was the type of person that said this, and they're like, hey, how was Snake Eyes? And I'm like, well, it's not perfect. They might go watch it and be like, dude, that was fucking awful. Why did you say that? Why didn't you tell me? Like, you betrayed me. We're not friends anymore. And I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I just didn't want to insult the people that made Snake Eyes. It's not even a great Halo game like games before it were. Yeah. But I'll tell you what it was for me. It was my Halo game. It's my Halo. I might have dived into this series with Halo 2 and played through every game since, and Halo 3 might Wait, be... hold on. Okay. <clears throat> I dove into this with Halo 2, but Halo 4 is my... <sighs> Did I hear that right? That just ain't right. Hold up. Wait a minute, something ain't right. I can smell it. I can taste him. This is weird. He played Halo, he, he started, so all that shit I just said was pointless. He started with Halo 2, but Halo 4 was his Halo game. How does that make sense when Halo 2 is just far superior in every single way? And Halo 2 is even more impactful if you played Halo 1 first because you're like, oh, the Arbiter. You know, the introduction. It was just cool, man. It was cool. I'm not getting on a Halo 2 review here, but, man, I love that game. My favorite, if not my favorite game of all time, but Halo 4 was very special to me. So, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I'm all over the place here. Did he say Halo 2 or Halo 4 was his favorite? Effectively, it's not even a great Halo game like Shh, games before it were. But I'll tell you what it was for me. It was my Halo game. I might have dived into this series with Halo 2 and played through every game since, and Halo 3 might be my favorite, if not oh, okay. my favorite game of all time, but okay. well, Halo 4 respect that. was very special to me. It came but out why? during a perfect age where I was young enough to not worry about the obligations and responsibilities uh, of being an adult, while still having the freedom to stay up as late as I wanted to and have the TV all to myself. Oh man, those were the times. Those were the times. So he, he was... I don't want to say, like, 
Halo 2 was his first game, but he was like a teenager during Halo 4. What was my teenager game? Like, I played the shit out of Halo 3 and Reach. But I wasn't a teenager when Halo 3 came out. I don't think I was a teenager when Halo Reach came out. What year was that? Oh, I'm using my phone to record. I can't Google shit. I need to get a camera. Or just... Hey, if you're listening still, I know this video is like long as shit. If I put my laptop here with the little camera, like... Will the quality be too shit to do that? Because like I could plug it in right there. Run the wire over here to my awesome tripod. And do that and then I have my phone to like you know check time or do quick google searches I, is that something I should do or just keep rocking like this for now I don't know I'm, I imagine that this has a better camera let's finish this I will never forget the countless hours I put into this game whether it was sweating it up in games of oddball going on a 26 win streak my first unfreaking believable in a game of big team hell the yeah maps I created on hell the yeah bro forge canvases to friends I made in custom game lobbies, some of which I still know and talk to you regularly. The way I felt after completing the campaign and just sitting through the credits as never forget played, just trying to take in everything that happened as my childhood felt like it got completely crushed. In a good way though, I might add. It was a good kind of emotion. Halo 4 might have been the jumping off point for many people in the community, but for me, it felt like I was just getting started. Oh man, I'm sorry. Felt like, you see that editing there? It's like, I felt like I was just getting started and that's like the game ends and something comes off and it's like, you were just getting started, but Halo 5 and 6 were like the next ones. So it's like, man, I, I'm sorry. I don't wanna be too mean. I know I was ripping on this guy a little bit, but I mean, that's just, that's just part of reaction, you know? He was saying some really off the wall shit. Stuff I'm like a little passionate about. I don't have to fake that. You could tell. He was like droning on and on about Cortana and Master Chief. And I was starting to get like sleepy. Like, Ben, I've been up for a while. I woke up at 4 this morning. No, I actually, I woke up because I had to piss at like 3.45. So I actually got to work early. 3.45. I've been up. Just fucking coffee. Gains. Put my boys to bed. And then here I am. And I saw he start droning on and on about the emotional shit about Cortana. I'm just like, uh, but then he says something that just fired me right back up and here we are and I'm awake again, like ready to do another video. I'm not doing another one. I'm actually, I'm fucking hopping in bed after this, but, um, should we do, oh, I'll, I'll let him plug whatever this is. This is two years ago, but let's let him plug whatever this is. Celebrating 20 years of, I got it. I'm gonna wear that shirt. Oh wait, I think I already did. 20 years of Halo, I got the shirt. And Cortana. Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I love that music, dog. Look at that shit. God, that's one of my best shots. Look at that. Oh, yes, Key, baby. Mmm. Mmm. George. Yeah, fuck that one. No, 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 no. Stop it. It was going so good. You fucking ruined it. What is... <clears throat> what is this? Is he about to plug something? I'm trying to let him put a video up. Oh, okay. He's got 20 years of Halo. So if you want to go watch 20 years of music, epic piano shit. So yeah, that was that. Not impressed. No, 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 no. Don't start. Stop, 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 stop. The ultimate Halo 4 critique. Ben plays games. Might have to go be like, hey, bro. Nice review. Or something. I'll go watch it. Oh, it's about as long as mine. That's cool. Maybe we could be friends, Mr. Ben Plays Games. All right, anyways. Yeah, that was, um, the video wasn't very good. I like the editing, you know. There was this little punchy, you know, a uh, little emotional manipulation with the music and stuff like that. I'm not really a huge fan of it. Um, I don't know, but it depends on how you use it. I guess he likes the game, so it made sense to put it in where he did, because if I was talking about, like, Halo 3, when Johnson died, and I put, like, a sad track. It's like, yeah, that would make sense. But it's also when Johnson died. So I feel like, like, that's justified, right? That's justified. Halo 4, like, fucking clown game. He likes it, so. Which is nothing wrong. You can like, like, listen, listen. Before you come at me and start fucking blah, blah, blah in the comment. You can like, you can like whatever the fuck you want. I mean, I don't care. Just 
you got to really reserve calling things good for good things and calling things bad for bad things. Like, it's an important distinction. Like, you can't be like IGN and give everything a 7, okay? And give Lord of the Rings a 9, uh, whatever they gave it. I think they gave it a 9.9, .9, which they probably needed to update that because they give things like She-Hulk, the TV show, a 7 or a 7.5. Hilarious. You don't want to be that, is the point. You don't want to be given everything a 7, okay? You got to use the whole grading scale. Like, <clears throat> you try to just pay attention to things that you've given numbers in the past and try to, like, well, where does this fit in there? Like, I would give, like, this isn't a 1 out of 10. Like, the universe is, like, intact. Well, it's, like, it's kind of intact. Like, the retcons kind of break the universe, but it's still, like, a coherent universe. Um, I don't know what I would give Halo 4 numbers wise. That'd be an interesting, an interesting thing. Maybe I'll do like a tier list. <sighs> it's going to be jank as shit if I do one. Maybe I could do one with paper. Cause I don't know how the fuck to do like the, the one online that you see like all the fitness channels doing. I don't know how to do that, but it could be fun to do some Halo tier lists like weapons and games. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'm going to be done for tonight. I don't know what time my wife and daughter are getting home, but, um, I am going to get ready for bed because I'm waking up at four again to go bring home the bacon. So thanks for dropping in and I'll see you guys later.